Good morning, I'm Michael Davis, Head of International Sales for Eurostar. Thanks for joining us today, Michael, on Breaking Travel News. Uh, you're uh, rolling off the back of a good year. Yeah, we had an excellent 2009. We started off very strong. Um, we had an incident in the Channel Tunnel in September, which obviously slowed down our growth rate. But we ended up the year plus 10.9% compared with the year before. And we carried our most ever travellers at 9.1 million. So we're pleased. And, you know, we're hopeful going forward. And also... Um this year, you've kind of just opened up a couple of weeks ago, the tunnel, you're back up to full speed yeah. now, schedule's better than ever. How, how's things progressing? Very well. We're up to 19 trains a day to um, Paris, 10 days, trains a day to Brussels, and we are doing really well. Punctuality is at 95% for the first two weeks, so that's an incredible rate compared with what the airline figures are. I think they tend to average around the mid-60%, so we're doing very well. We're pleased with how it's going so far. Now, it's been a... It's a bad year all round for travel but you seem to be one of the companies that is doing well you've kind of almost tapped into a niche yeah I, I mean I think it's fair to say that you know it's tough for us as well this year last year was very good and things are slower this year but we feel at Eurostar that there's a real desire an underlying desire that's growing for an alternative to flying short haul within Europe. And that's why we've seen since the opening of High Speed One a real increase in the number of travellers moving over to um, Eurostar instead of flying between our cities and also looking at further destinations with our rail team partners now. You can travel through to Amsterdam, through to Cologne, through to Nice. So it really is an opportunity to travel further afield with Eurostar and our partners. And that will only improve once the other high speed lines open this year and next in Europe. Now also, you know, the pound doesn't go as far. People are concentrating more on their holidays rather than picking some random, random destination and jetting off there. They're going more to the store, what's the Paris, the places like that. How are you kind of benefiting from that? I mean, certainly inbound from the um, Paris and Brussels markets, our business is doing very well because, you know, the pound compared to the euro is at a fantastic rate. So I read something from the Oxford Street Association on um, the weekend saying that a Saturday in Oxford Street is like walking down Boulevard Houseman in Paris where all the major department stores are because all the prisons are coming over and we're helping to support that by really marketing in the markets. But also in overseas markets now, I think our whole campaign is based around the whole value idea that actually due to the um, strength of the dollar against the pound now, London is an affordable destination. I think it's always been perceived as fairly expensive, but actually now the realisation is that you can do a great trip. And the benefit is with Eurostar is you don't have to do just one trip, you can do two. Why just go to London on one trip when you can do Paris as well at the same time? Now, also in the next few weeks you're going to be rolling out some plans for uh, interline e-ticketing as well. Yeah. Can you highlight a bit what that's going to be about? Yeah, well, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Eurostar is the world's first um, surface carrier um, rail company to appear on primary screen GDS. So we're already in the UK and in the US. That also allows us to link up with airline partners and we work with a number of existing airline partners and with a couple of them we're developing our interline e-ticketing, which means that um, a travel agent or an airline themselves will be able to book a journey which includes Eurostar. So they can book the London power sector as a Eurostar journey as well. And that comes up as one ticket for the airline, which can be retrieved at any of our stations. Now, as well as the recession, there's a big drive towards sustainability. That fear is yeah. taking second place now as people look at the bottom line. But somehow, Eurostar, that almost is integral to your business model, yeah. rather than actually flying. How do you see that panning out over the future? I think it's fair to say that for us, it's not a marketing ploy, it's not a marketing gimmick, it's central to what we do. It's a real core belief in the company that actually sustainability, green travel, um, train travel is the way forward. And so this year we'll be celebrating the second anniversary of our Tread Lightly initiative, which is our 10-point plan to cut our CO2 emissions. Um, so really we'll be actually looking to increase the amount of activity we do in that um, area. It's increasingly important for us. And our travellers are responding both by their interest in what we're doing and by the fact that they're travelling with us more and more um, by train. So yeah, it's something that we're completely committed to from CEO level, who's, our CEO is a great advocate of everything environmental, to customer services staff. It's a real belief within the company that this is the way to go. And I guess ultimately that's what travel is about. It should be an enjoyable experience. It should make you feel good, both about the planet and also if you're going on holiday, you want to relax, you want a stress-free yeah. 
that's the whole thing, you know, travelling by train compared to short haul trips is much more relaxing. And also we want to bring a bit more enjoyment into the journey. So for example at St Pancras International, our new London home, we have a National Gallery partnership so you can look at the different um, paintings from the National Gallery. We have a Google Earth wall so that you can look at any of our destinations including rail team destinations to find out more about where you're going to. So it really is just bringing a little more fun back into your journey and just really sort of focusing on the fact that it's hassle-free and stress-free as a means of transport. Okay, Michael, thanks very much for joining us here at ITB. Thanks very much.